Welcome back guys, this is Chad with uh, Guitar Arsenal, and I'm taking over a little bit today uh, in lieu of Eric, and we're going to talk about the Electro Harmonix Bass Micro Synth. This is a uh, very, very cool analog synthesizer pedal uh, that's voiced more for bass guitar. Uh, they do offer these for standard guitar as well, standard six strings, but we're playing four strings today. And uh, these pedals are just so neat. I've owned a, a couple of these over the years. I did have one a while back uh, that was modded by Analog Man, uh, Mike over there, uh, for True Bypass and had a couple other improvements. But stupidly, I got rid of that thing forever ago because I picked up a uh, Novation uh, synthesizer rack mount and then a little keyboard and all this mess. I was experimenting with some weird bass stuff, but uh, needless to say, I got rid of all that. But I wound up getting another one of the micro synths, and this is kind of the old school and the large uh, sheet metal enclosure. And these pedals are really interesting. They've got a uh, they've got a square wave setting, so you can dial in all sorts of craziness resonance. Just go down the line here. So you got your trigger control. This is going to be a real quick and dirty video, guys, just to give you an idea of what this thing can do. Your trigger control is basically the sensitivity that the uh, pedal has in regard to your pick attack or your finger attack. So the lower the trigger, um, the less sensitive it's going to be. The higher it is, the more sensitive it's going to be, if I'm not mistaken. I think that... Alright, so I'm not hitting it very hard. Yeah. So the lower you go on the trigger, you've got to hit the strings a lot harder to get it to do what you want it to do. You've got a sub-optic, so that's just what it entails. So that puts one octave down from the note that you're playing and then it adds the effect of the synthesizer onto that. Your guitar setting right here, all this does is just mixes in your clean sound, which I like blending the regular bass sound a lot on these type of effects pedals. You've got a higher octave, one octave up from your um, standard note that you're playing. Square wave, obviously that increases or decreases the amount of the square wave, sort of the distortion effect. And then turn it all the way up. Let's get this frequency here set up just midway. That way you can hear the square wave real good. And I'm playing this on a fretless just because it's really neat. It kind of mimics like the, the roller on like a, a synthesizer, you know, where you can roll the pitch up and down, kind of, you know, shift the pitch around. That's the square wave all the way down. And then your attack delay... We'll turn that all the way up and hear what that sounds like. So with the attack delay all the way up, it kind of fades in a little bit. I like more of an immediate attack, so I keep it all the way down. Okay. But you can set it wherever you want. There's all sorts of sounds you can get out of this thing. We'll go through some of that in a minute. The resonance kind of adds this uh, little bit of like a mid-range hump to the sound. Turn all the way up and you hear what it sounds like. Really, really cool. Now the start and stop frequency is the neatest thing to me. So we're going to turn the rate up just a little bit so you can get more of an idea of what this does. So you've got a high start frequency and a low stop frequency. So your notes are going to start out at kind of a higher pitch and then drop down so let's turn that rate down just a little bit so it goes a little faster here how it loses sort of that resonance starts out kind of high pitch and then drops down we're going to reverse it and let's leave the rate where it is You guys can get an idea of what that sounds like. I personally like this kind of sound here. Makes me think of, uh, if I can remember how to do it, it's kind of the supernatural uh, bass tone from Robin Ford. 
Let's see, we get that sub octave up a little bit, square wave up there, resonance. Alright, let's get that stop frequency and that right down. guys can kind of hear that it's like the exact tone on that record on supernatural it's just this little rock and tune and b bass player switches between uh, the micro synth or some sort of synthesizer setup or an, i don't know if it's an envelope filter that he's using something around those lines but it sounds like he's got a square wave on there and that's kind of what i was trying to get out of this thing let's see if we can figure out let's see here play around with these knobs a little bit this thing is down here, far on the floor on the pedal board. <laughs> See if I can get my tone the way I want it. And uh, the reason, like I said, I like using the fretless is because it gives kind of a neat, neat sound with this particular pedal. Forgive me guys, it's gonna take me a second to get the sound that I want out of this thing. That's one bad thing about it being analog. You get a really good sound out of it, but boy, if you want to change settings, you really need to keep a notepad with all your different uh, setups on there. Oh yeah, hang on a second. <laughs> oh boy. All right, let's see. Get that square wave up. <laughs> Turn that resonance down just a little bit, kind of nasally sounding. All right, <laughs> let's see. Perfect for like that sledgehammer kind of sound, you know? Let's see, uh, let's get these frequencies up a little bit, get that square wave up. And I was listening to a tune the other day, just kind of came on my iTunes in the truck, and it's like, man, it's a Sorrow by Pink Floyd. It has this really cool, like, kind of synth bass line. It made me think about, um, you know, this, this particular pedal in this video. It's kind of just drones and E for a little while, you know, but. It's got that sub octave that's just crazy. Let's see if we can get that sound kind of close. You guys get the idea. But a lot of neat sounds you can get out of this thing. Some of the sort of like... Let's see. Uh, like I said, it takes a minute to get your sound the way you want it. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Uh, um. Let's 
see. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Almost there, almost there. <laughs> Derek's over there critiquing me here. You suck! No, Let's see, uh, <laughs> oh man. Gosh, I can't even think of how the bass line goes now. I ain't played it in a while. Uh, you know, Boogie on Reggae Woman. Let's see, uh, uh, let's see. It's gonna be embarrassing if I can't remember how to play the song. Help me out here. How's that bass line go? You know, I'll remember this once I turn the camera off. This is how it works. Like, you think about all these things you want to play. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then you get the camera rolling. And then you try to play it, and you forget everything you ever knew. This is what happened before. It's what the camera does when you turn Dude, it off. Dude, I'm telling you. Screws up everything. Let's see. Uh, God, man. Um. I can't even think of the dang rhythm. Y'all are just going to have to sit here for a minute until I figure it out. Um. That's about right, yeah. <laughs> I told you I'd figure it out. But you can get all kinds of neat sounds out of this thing, man. It's just so awesome. It's just such a cool pedal. I mean, and then like you can do this crazy, all right, square wave, let's do sub-optic all the way up, get that octave up, and uh, turn the resonance down a little ways. You can get these long, if you got a bass that, if you got a bass that sustains like crazy. All right, so check this out. Whoa, I'm probably peeking over there. That is such a cool sound. All right, it's a little barky for me with the square wave. Let's turn that square wave down a little bit. Just 
just some neat sounds you can get out of this sucker. I mean, it's just a very versatile pedal. Um, biggest thing is just finding the kind of sounds that you like and literally like making a, kind of making a mental note of it. And you can just literally, you can go just with the synth sound itself instead of having your guitar in there at all. I mean, you can do all sorts of neat stuff with it. I just thought I'd kind of show it off and the, uh, the newer units, the newer units are so much smaller. They're a, a very, very compact pedal. Uh, uses just a standard like Hammond enclosure. It's literally uh, maybe like a four four inch by five inch enclosure instead of like this large shoebox, more or less. Um, they really did do a good job with those pedals. Um, I haven't heard one in person, but yeah, I don't know if they made any changes to the uh, electronics as far as just the component selection goes, or they just literally compress it down into a smaller unit. Um, whatever the case is, I don't really know what the new units sound like. And they've been making these things since the 80s. If I'm not mistaken, maybe late 70s. Uh, I can't remember when the first uh, micro sense were produced, but you know some of the older pedals are quite desirable and they can command a pretty premium price. Um, I've never played through one of the the vintage units before. Um, like I said, I've I've had two of these and they were both modern units. The oldest one I have was maybe like around a 2002 or 2003 produced. Uh, this one is around like a 2010. Um, so it's a little bit older unit. Um, you know nothing crazy, but they do use a, a wall wart power supply. That's one benefit to the newer units, if I'm not mistaken. I think they take just a standard 9-volt power supply, uh, so you can run it from a pedal power or whatever the case is. Uh, this one does take a little bit more space on the board. But it is a neat pedal. And, um, you know, I, I don't really use it terribly often, but for some things, it is just, it's neat to have just kind of in the, uh, in the guitar signal, so to speak, just because it is an interesting pedal. And you can get some very interesting sounds. Now, one thing about it, like a... Uh, I think I forgot to mention earlier, it is not really polyphonic, so you might be able to get away with playing like two notes. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. Up on the higher registers, it doesn't sound too bad. But you can hear that it's jumping from pitch to pitch. fretless bass but let's see uh all right all right all right, all right. <laughs> you can just get some cool sounds out of this sucker. Man, I could go on and play with this thing like all day, but it gives you guys a pretty good idea like what these pedals are capable of. They do make these for guitars as well. And Electro Harmonix has all kinds of other neat pedals. I think, Eric, did you used to have one of those, uh, the Pogs? Yeah. The, you could get some like organist type sounds out of that thing. So or neat. Like Robin Ford, he used it for steel drum sounds. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> But you can get all sorts of neat sounds out of it. And the polyphonic octave generator, it is a polyphonic pedal, so you can play chords with it. The micro synth, at least this model, no, not so much. Um, but anyway, so if you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, I'm going to noodle around and make a little bit more racket for you. And uh, just a neat pedal. And uh, really appreciate all you guys watching these videos and our horrible playing, especially mine, because I don't get behind, or I don't get in front of the camera very often, but. You know, at least by myself. I'll jam with Eric every now and again. That way you can cover up a lot of my flubs. And I edit the videos so I can edit in, uh, you know, the fixes and all that kind of stuff. You guys probably have seen that in the past. No, I'm just kidding. I don't edit anything. I ain't got time for all that. All right, let's make it a little bit more racket here. And uh, we're going to move on and let you guys get back to your day.
Let's see. Let's see, uh... Alright, hang on, I gotta get my tone right like I want here. <laughs> 